Up next on the new Black Enterprise Business Report, new host, new set, and more financial know-how from the nation's number one authority on black business, broadcast from the nation's financial capital of the world. Welcome to Black Enterprise Business Report. I'm Sean Gables. We've got a jam-packed 30 minutes going one-on-one -on -one with America's first black billionaire. Plus, Black Enterprise's financial experts are here with wealth-building advice and will even enjoy the fruits of our labor with the Lux Life. But first, he's best known for the television network he created. He's since closed that chapter, focusing on his next act. Robert Johnson recently sat down with Ed Gordon, the host of our sister show, Our World with Black Enterprise. Robert Johnson is our power player. He's known as a business visionary, building his fortune and savvy reputation as the owner of Black Entertainment Television. After the sale of the successful cable network in 2000, Bob Johnson became America's first black billionaire. Now his empire is made up of hotels, a pro sports franchise, and a bank. And the Mississippi native promises there's more to come. Recently, we sat down at his Bethesda, Maryland office to talk about his second act. Here's a portion of an extended interview you'll see this fall. Do you like that title, the second act for Bob Johnson? The second act is, is sort of to say, you know, gee, you know, instead of just sort of sitting back, resting on my laurels and trying to play golf, go fishing, whatever, you know, there's some other things I'd like to do. And um, uh, this area where I've moved into now is, is that. And I'm, I'm having a lot of fun putting it all together. Bob, let's talk about Act Two, if we can. Uh, RLJ Companies. Some might ask why so much diversity under that umbrella? Actually, it's not that diverse if you, if you think about it is. It's financial services entertainment entertainment I know by a basketball team by basketball has many same attributes of BET it's talent driven it has uh, advertiser or sponsorship support and your performance is rated by in this case ticket sales as opposed to audience rating if people don't like what you put on the floor on the product yeah they don't buy the tickets so it has the same elements of entertainment sports and entertainment sort of go hand in hand if you go to the financial services business, uh, it's really managing money. You get money from pension funds. You go out and buy 130 hotels, and you hold those hotels, and then you sell them, and you return the money back to the pension funds with a higher return. So the true formula of this is find an area that's been underpenetrated by African-American ownership. No one ever owned a sports team before. Find an area where, it's, uh, where you African Americans can be first. We bought two hotels overnight. We're the largest African American hotel company in the world. I mean, it's, it's a sad commentary, but that's the way it is. The foundation of Johnson's second act is RLJ Companies. One of the businesses under that parent company is RLJ Development, a privately held hotel investment company, which is number eight on the BE Industrial Service 100 list. Buying more than 100 Marriott and Hilton properties, Johnson was in part able to make this possible because of his 12-year association as a board member of Hilton Hotels. RLJ Asset Management formed a private equity fund with blue chip partner the Carlisle Group. Bill Kennard is a managing director. Bob is one of the, the finest entrepreneurs of our generation of any color. He's absolutely fearless. He is persistent. When he has a goal, he won't give up. And, uh, and those are the qualities that, that we and a lot of people admire about Bob Johnson and, and, and uh, drove us to want to be his partner. There's also Our Stories Films. The company is the first film studio headed by an African-American. His partners in this venture, Hollywood heavyweights Harvey and Bob Weinstein. And running the company is acclaimed TV and film producer Tracy Edmonds. I've always, you know, respected and, ad and admired, you know, his ingenuity, you know, his success, his vision. You know, he's been a trailblazer, you know, for so many years. Johnson is the majority owner of the Charlotte Bobcats, 
Bobcat Sports and Entertainment is the parent company of the basketball team. It ranks number 41 on the Black Enterprise Industrial Service list with over $100 million in sales. The team is the first major sports franchise owned by an African American. You mentioned Michael Jordan. He's a co-owner now, a uh, minority owner in your basketball team, the Charlotte Bobcats. Um, so much has been made of his competitive spirit, and so many people uh, give that mantle, that tag to you. How competitive are you? Well, you know, Michael is is competitive to the nth degree. I mean, he he wakes up in the morning trying to figure out what he can compete in. You know, I'm a little bit different. I, I'm competitive in the sense that when I set my sights on something I want to do, I'm very competitive to achieve that particular end. You've said that you you want to make sure uh, that you can show African Americans, just in general, uh, as an example, how to build wealth. You've done it from uh, the financial arms that you are putting together. Uh, talk to me about how important the hedge funds, the equity funds, and the like are to that. Well, see, I, I think the, the real thing when you talk about wealth creation is the, the, the two, two ways you do it is one is you do savings and investment. Most African Americans don't save, and therefore, if you don't save, obviously you can't invest because you don't have it to invest. So what I'm trying to do is to do a couple of things. Is one, I'm trying to say go to the huge pension funds, corporate and public, that hold a huge amount of this nation's wealth, and a big portion of that wealth comes out of the pockets of African Americans who pay to their pension fund. But unfortunately, none, very little of that money is managed by African Americans because the rap on African Americans is you guys don't know how to manage money. You guys don't know how to create wealth. And, you know, the reason that people are able to get away with that is because there's so many, so few African Americans who have accumulated visible wealth to say, wait a minute, we know how to do it. Look, I did it. So my point is what I try to do is to say, I'm going to show the pension fund and advisors who are really running black folks money that black folks have the ability to take that money and return value just as white folks do. So what I set out to do with these funds, whether it's hedge fund, private equity, private equity, real estate, is to, is to rebut that question by saying, look, I can assemble a team of talented people from Wharton, Stanford, who would love, who could easily work at Citicorp, easily work at Lehman or Merrill, and I'm going to take them, put them under my umbrella, and we're going to create value just as Blackstone or Apollo or some of these other funds do. For Bob Johnson, his second act may be his best act yet. Coming up, the real cost of Homeland Security. The war in Iraq is just the beginning. Soldiers face mounting financial and social challenges when they return home. Our black enterprise wealth builders to the rescue when we come back. <laughs> 